I'm Casey Claiborne and thanks for coming to the Fox 7 Austin YouTube channel to check out this Crime Watch YouTube exclusive. We're taking a look at some of the most talked about recent crime stories in the Austin area and around Texas. We begin with the latest in the investigation into the murder of 23 year old Nicholas Martinez in South Austin. More than a year has passed since his death and his family says there are still no credible leads in the case. Now they're asking for the public's help. Fox 7 Austin's Shannon Ryan has the details. Of all the pain that comes with losing a child, it is the most difficult part. It's so hard not knowing. For Wendy and Martin Martinez. We know nothing's going to bring them back. Nothing's going to make it better, but just not knowing is just killing us. Their son Nicholas was murdered one year ago in South Austin. He was just 23. He was enjoying life, I feel like now. That he was getting going, traveling, and stuff like that. He was enjoying it. So, but he got cut short. It's not fair. It's just not fair. That evening, July 23rd, Nicholas was inside his unit at the Brook Apartments on I-35. He spoke with his parents on the phone at 8:30, then talked with his sister at 9:50. It's actually her birthday weekend. Today's her birthday. When the call ended, he started playing video games online with his cousin, telling him he had to take a quick break to get laundry out of the dryer which was in a communal facility on site. He never completed the task. Around 1030, he called 911. And he was very calm, and he told him he was stabbed. He drove himself to this Conoco gas station about a half mile away for help. And then he was pronounced dead at 1047. Yeah. That was it, it was that quick. Police found this knife inside his car and were able to pull a partial DNA profile, which hasn't been helpful so far, but they hope it will be as technology advances. Whoever owned the knife marked on it themselves. And so that's something we're hoping somebody would recognize. Police say they have no reason to think Nicholas was meeting up with anybody. And it's still unclear where exactly the crime occurred, though the family now believes Nicholas was parked behind his complex when the incident happened. We think it was some, something random that just happened and we don't know why. So if anybody saw anything, just come forward so that they can solve this for us and for Nico. Investigators in Spring Branch believe they found the body of a woman who was reported missing by her husband in July. The discovery was made near the home where Shana D. Mombro was last seen. Fox 7 Austin's Shannon Ryan has more on the story as law enforcement waits for autopsy results. This wave of relief has come over. In the center of a bone dry pond. It's nice to have answers now. Closure was found Friday night. The body had, was uh, decomposed. Um, it was um, quite um, almost unrecognizable with the exception of a tattoo that I believe they, they observed. Investigators are waiting on autopsy results, but believe that tattoo is Shana DeMambros. The body was found just a few hundred feet from the Spring Branch RV the 45-year-old shared with her husband, who reported her missing July 19th. There's just an enormous amount of um, investigation, investigation still left to do. Donald DJ Seeger helped locate the body. And it was just getting really, really discouraging. So to finally see it, I mean, I started crying when I got home from that. Seeger owned Seeger Water. He had been working in the area the day DeMambro was reported missing and was perplexed he hadn't seen anything unusual in the quiet area. We have the resources as a company, both with GIS mapping, we've got off-road vehicles, we've got accurate maps of the area. I thought, you know, we could certainly help put together a search. The body was found during a search of a private ranch, which Seeger says took him several days, even records requests to set up. If you own a large piece of property, please put your contact info at the gate. Um, because, and it could have been something like a fire, a brush fire inside the gate. There's no way to contact the owner. At this time, investigators have not said if they believe foul play is involved. And now I'm just praying that the sheriff's office and the medical examiner can come back with a definitive answer on what happened to her. Um, if justice needs to be served, I certainly hope it happens quickly. Shannon Ryan, Fox 7 Austin News. An update in a murder for hire plot involving an Austin businessman 
While behind bars, Eric Charles Mond is accused of trying to have one of his alleged co-conspirators murdered. That's according to a new indictment for the 46-year-old partner at Mond Automotive Group, a car dealership founded by his father. Back in December, Mond and three other suspects were arrested for the plot connected to the brutal killings of a couple in Nashville. The three suspects pictured are from Austin. A fourth suspect from North Carolina is not pictured. According to court documents, Mon would travel to Nashville often, where he occasionally met with 33-year-old Holly Williams. Her boyfriend, William Lanway, threatened to expose their relationship if Mon, who's married, didn't pay up. In March of 2020, police began looking for suspects after the bodies of Williams and Lanway were found at a construction site in Nashville. Detectives say Mon hired the other men to kidnap the couple and kill them for about $750,000. Since their arrest, Mond is also accused of trying to arrange to have one of the suspects murder another suspect who had asked for more money. Several pet grooming salons have been broken into over the past several weeks, and the owners believe the crimes might be connected. Fox 7 Austin's Shannon Ryan has the latest. Shattering glass with a brick. Shimmying through the hole, an intruder beelines for the cash register. When he realized he couldn't get anything out of our, um, till he got out of here pretty quickly. The man was inside where the fur flies, a pet grooming salon for just a few minutes, but left behind serious damage, forcing the business to replace its front door. Soon they'll have to do the same for this divider. It's really not um, profitable work. Most of us do it out of truly enjoying working with animals. The break in happened early in the morning on July 4th. It seemed like a really small incident until we started speaking with the other salons and finding out that this has actually happened to them as well. The business connected with Eliana yeah, Throwman. So. Robbery of pet salons? Yeah, they come and they break in, they take the cash register and they... Oh, gee, that sucks. She owns Mod Mutt, which was hit June 27th, and Sniff Grooming, which was broken into on July 11th. You feel really violated you know you feel like you work hard you you know you provide a service to clients wonderful clients and our wonderful employees and then you have you know someone just take advantage of your business posting about the break-ins online the business owners found at least four other grooming businesses had been victims of similar crimes it just it's it's sad that nothing can be done and this guy's just taking advantage of small businesses Shannon Ryan, Fox 7 Austin News. Police need your help tracking down a man and a woman who kidnapped and robbed an elderly woman at gunpoint in East Austin. She says the suspects forced her to withdraw money from a bank and buy things for them with her credit card. Fox 7 Austin's John Krinjak has details on the search for the suspects. Austin police want you to take a good look at this man and this woman. They're wanted for kidnapping a woman in her 70s in broad daylight on Francisco Street, just off Weberville Road in East Austin, then robbing her. I've been in the robbery unit for over two years now, and I've never had a case like this. Carlos Garcia, who knows the victim, says he was stunned. I never heard anything like that around on this. Uh, I said, pretty quiet around here. It was just before noon last Tuesday when the woman says she was walking here in her neighborhood along Francisco Street when she was approached by a man and a woman. Uh, this definitely was a brazen crime. The female suspect telling the woman she had a gun. They searched her bag and, and look around searching the house. The pair then forced the victim inside this 2019 Ford Escape pointing a gun at her. They put her in the car and take off, you know. They drove the frightened woman to her bank, forcing her to withdraw money before using her debit card to take out more cash at the ATM. Then they brought her to a store in Central Austin. They attempted to force the uh, victim to purchase several high dollar items. Finally, the pair left the woman on an East Austin street before driving off. Police say not trying to resist may have saved her life. She definitely did the right thing. She definitely was scared, of course, due to the uh, gravity of the situation, but um, when they dropped her off, she was not injured. Both suspects are described as Hispanic, the man standing about 5'8", the woman 5'6". These surveillance images captured as the terrifying crime unfolded. But what I really want from the public right now is just take a really good look at those photos and pass those photos out, post them on Facebook, try to get them out to as many people as possible, because if these people are local, I have a good feeling with these photos, we'll be able to identify them. 
In the meantime, it's a fresh reminder to seniors and everyone to be vigilant. Always be aware of your surroundings. Um, walking in groups is always better than walking alone. I'm going to keep an eye open. Scary though, huh? Yeah, I hope don't happen again, you know, no good. If you want to take a closer look at those photos, you can find the link to our website below this video. If you recognize the suspects, call the APD robbery tip line at 512-974-5092, or you can use the new Crime Stoppers app. A former fugitive on the FBI's top 10 most wanted list is on trial for the murders of his two daughters. Fox's Alex Boyer from our sister station, Dallas, has the details. It's been nearly 15 years since two sisters were found shot to death inside a taxi cab in Irving. This week, Yasser Saeed will go on trial accused of murdering his daughters. The defense is going to have an incredible challenge uh, set out for them. George Milner is a criminal defense attorney not associated with this case. Saeed is charged in the deaths of 18-year-old daughter Amina and 17-year-old daughter Sarah on New Year's Day 2008. Detectives say he took them for a ride in the cab borrowed from a friend, telling them they were going to get something to eat. Instead, investigators say he drove them to Irving and shot both of them inside the vehicle. He evaded capture for 12 years, found living in rural Denton County in 2020. 20. Flight can be offered as evidence of consciousness of guilt. On Monday, jury selection began at the Dallas County Courthouse. The case made national headlines after investigators in Irving said the girls' deaths were honor killings targeted by their father because they were not, in his view, following the tenets of their Islamic faith. In her dying moments, Sarah called 911, saying their father had shot them. Milner says all of the previous publicity could make it challenging to pick an impartial jury. That there are two points of view and you need to consider this. There is another side to this. And I would ask a jury, can you be open-minded and listen to all of the evidence before you make up your mind as to which side is correct. While the police investigation points to rage and retaliation, the prosecution has not presented a clear motive. We also do not know the defense's strategy. And we don't know the underlying facts. There may be more to it. Still, Milner says under the Texas Penal Code, there's only two reasons a person can be justified in taking another person's life in defense of yourself against potential of deadly harm or the defense of a third person against deadly harm. Those don't seem like options in this case. And if you're left with the unjustified killing of two people, you have textbook capital murder. As Fox's Alex Boyer reporting, the Dallas County District Attorney has said he won't seek the death penalty. So if convicted, said will be automatically sentenced to life without parole. Thank you for watching this Fox 7 Austin Crime Watch. Our exclusive Crime Watch stories run each Monday on Fox 7 Austin News at 9. Again, to learn more about the stories featured today, look for the links below this video. You can also find more stories on our website, fox7austin.com, or subscribe to the Fox 7 Austin YouTube channel.